Hey, restaurant pros. Restaurant labor costs are one thing. Having the right amount of labor to handle the business walking through the doors is a completely different thing. So how do you determine how many restaurant employees you really need? I'm gonna share that with you in just a moment. I'm David Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. I've been coaching restaurant owners since 2003, and I'm really glad you're here to learn. Today, I wanna to talk about how to determine how many restaurant employees you really need. But before I do that, if you like tips and tricks like this, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and oh yeah, that bell, so you're notified when my next video tip comes out. And for more tips and tricks for running a profitable restaurant or to hear restaurant owner success stories, Make sure you tune into my podcast, Restaurant Prosperity Formula, found on all the popular podcasting services. I want to be extremely transparent here. After watching this video, you'll not be able to walk away with the perfect formula for success when determining how many restaurant employees you really need. Why? There are so many variables at play here. Style of service, price point, complexity of your menu. Is there a bar component to your operation? Just to name a few. I'm going to attempt to give you two key indicators to use in your restaurant to determine how many restaurant employees you actually need. Key indicator number one is what I call a down and dirty dollars per labor hour work calculation. When I say down and dirty, we're not going to get into a detailed spreadsheet and look at everything by hour and so on. Just kind of a, a, a cursory level. Hey, am I being efficient or not? So what do I need for this? Well, you need hours worked by position. So how many bar bartender hours are where, how many cook hours, prep cooks, dishwashers, you get the picture. Then I need total sales by category based on the position I'm trying to see if I'm efficient in. That means if I'm a, if I've got my kitchen hours, my cooks, well, do they produce sales in behind the bar? No. So I'm going to need my food sales only to measure against my kitchen hours only where I might look at my bartenders. And if I'm a restaurant that, that primarily the bar is where people drink, they don't, they don't eat, then I'm not going to give the bartenders the efficiencies of the food sales. It's only going to be bottle beer, draft beer, wine, liquor in total, right? Against their hours. But if I'm in a place that lots of people sit there and dine, as well as my servers, they get food and beverage sales to go against. So based on the, the position, what do they produce? We're going to tally up by category, if you will, those total sales. Next, I'm going to take the sales for each one of those categories and divide them by the hours worked. This is going to give me my dollars per labor hour worked. So for instance, I may get this done and I find that here are my sales, here are the number of hours. And based on that, we do $150 per labor hour worked. For every man hour behind the line, we produced $150 in food sales. Get the picture? Now, that average is important to me, but not until I go one step further. Now I'm gonna look at my sales per ticket, but I'm gonna divide it into per person. The average per person sales by category, the same way we just did it for the dollars per labor hour work calculation. So if my food, right? If I look at my total ticket and it's $35 per person, but I'm doing X percent of sales is food. And let's say now I calculate it. I go, oh, $25 per person is what my food only on that per person is. I need that number versus the 35 for if I'm a server and I'm going against food and liquor sales. Get the picture? Now I take my dollars per labor work, that 150, if you will. And I divide it by the average per person by category. That'd be the $25 food only for the kitchen, right? So my kitchen produces for every man hour behind the, the line, they produce $150 in sales. Well, $25 in food sale only per person divided into that 150, I'm gonna find that what? We produce six entrees an hour on average. That's basically what we're trying to calculate. And then when you look at that number, you're going to determine whether that's a good number or a bad number. I will tell you, it is not unusual for me to come in and see that five to 10 entrees per hour. And I would ask you, is that efficient? And you would say no, but David, we open our restaurant with no sales and there's, there's cooks on the line. We close our restaurant, no sales, there's cooks on the line. 
But we also have those hours where we're getting crushed and we're doing 30, 40 entrees an hour. So it is an average. And the fact of the matter is when we start to look at that, we still say five, six entrees an hour. That's nothing. We might be looking at trying to get to 25 or 30, depending on your concept. Again, you need to know your criteria, right? How complex your menu is, what your, what the, the sale price is of your average food item. So you're going to look at that and you're going to determine is that efficient or not. Now, the second key indicator is minimum staffing. So now for each position, you're going to write the absolute minimum number of hours for each day, for each position and total it for the week. Like you are creating the slimmest schedule period, whether you did $1 or you did up to $10,000 in the day, what is that minimum? I've got one cook on the line. I've got one manager, one server, one cashier, whatever it may be. It's like the bare minimum to get through. So now you build this minimum, bare minimum schedule. Let's talk about why you have to calculate each of these, right? Because the efficiency side versus the minimum number of people, because I can total, total up all those hours in the minimum, divide it by eight, whatever it may be. Really say, I need a cook on the line, a cook on the line, AM, PM, however you want to get to it. We can truly come up with that minimum staffing, but you can't use each one of these individually. Why? Well, number one, your dollars per of our work shows you efficiencies. What if we find out that we're not efficient? Is that because we have too many people on the line or is it that our menu is too complex? Number two, minimum staffing level shows you what you need to execute your current menu at bare bones. What if we determine that minimum staffing levels is two, three cooks on the line because our menu is too complex or is it we've got one cook and it truly is something else. Number three, I've got to use both these calculations because there's a chance that you could really have strong sales and you're never going to see minimum staffing levels. So that second calculation has nothing to do with anything in your operation, but you need to make a major change to your operation and your menu. We may need different equipment to make things faster and easier. We may need to reset up our line or reset up our bar, make changes to our menus and what we offer. It is a big deal to look at that. Number four, there's a chance that your sales are just way too low. And no matter what you do, you're going to be at minimum staffing levels unless you increase your sales. That your number one thing to create efficiency is to pay attention to your operation and increase your sales. And number five, finally, it's a combination of both. You may have a little minimum staffing levels out of season and, and you've got maximum efficiencies, meaning you've got sales galore in season. But the truth of the matter is, You've got to make different changes based on the season. And it still comes down to your menu and your operation. See, the real answer is you have to do the calculations and interpret the data the best of your abilities. I'm going to tell you this. It's my experience that 75% of the restaurants I've ever worked with, when it comes down to looking at these calculations, the truth of the matter is they often need to change their menus because their efficiencies are upside down. What do you think you're going to find? If you're tired of not being able to leave your restaurant because no one else knows how to run it, I want to make sure you know it doesn't have to be that way. You can leave your restaurant. It is possible to build a team of people who know how you want the restaurant to run with trained and responsible people in place. You can give yourself time away. What would you do if you had time away from your restaurant? Would you sleep better? Would your relationships improve? Would you feel more relaxed? These are all things you deserve to experience as a business owner. It's why we own our own businesses. If you would like to learn how to own a restaurant that doesn't depend on you to be successful, click the link in the description to watch a free video to learn exactly what you have to do. Also, be sure to subscribe to get my weekly tips and watch these two videos to get more information and guidance for running a successful restaurant.